<laughs> so I, I went, and uh, it was out in Long Island, and uh, before you jump, where'd you guys jump? In the States or somewhere? UK. UK? New Jersey. New Jersey, okay. Uh, me and you will probably, similar story. Uh, did you guys have to sign the paperwork before you jumped? Yeah. They have paperwork. It says, if you die, you won't sue. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lawyer, but <laughs> <laughs> shitty deal. <laughs> I didn't even get to sign the paperwork though, because when I walked in, the lady behind the desk looked at me and went, "Excuse me, could you get on the scale?" <laughs> she goes, "Just get on the scale, standard procedure." So I walk over and I step on the scale. I walk up and I step on it, and the lady comes over. And she has this little clipboard. She goes like this, close enough. <laughs> Close <laughs> <laughs> <Just> enough. <laughs> I'm a fucking airplane. <laughs> Just don't worry about it. Go out back to give the safety instructions. I was in Long Island, which, if you know anything about Long Island, New Jersey probably similar. They didn't do shit by the book. <laughs> I went out for the safety instructions, and there was a guy with a mullet and three teeth. <laughs> and he was listening to Bon Jovi at full blast. <laughs> I liked the song, so I didn't hear a fucking word he said. <laughs> <laughs> I was stoned. I walked out and saw some guy go, We gotta hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Get on the plane. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I missed everything. So I started walking toward this plane, and I'm telling you, I was nervous. I didn't know what I was doing. And there was a guy on the plane just staring at me. This big dude. He's just, just staring me down. And I'm like, I think I'm maybe a little paranoid in the pot, you know? And I'm like walking toward the plane, and right as I go to get on, he goes, Whoa, 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 excuse me, sir. You're way too fat to jump out of this plane. <laughs> and I was like, too fat to jump out? Too fat to jump out of a plane? I know I'm built more for a Lazy River tube ride. <laughs> too fat to fall? <laughs> it's against everything I know. But I was fine with it. I wanted to leave. My friend still wanted to jump. So my one friend actually starts an argument with the guy. And this is his, this is his opening statement to the fight. Hey, didn't we used to parachute tanks out of planes in World War II? Who <laughs> 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 <You> say that? <laughs> now everybody's pointing and laughing at me. And I turned bright red. The lady who let me through, she comes running out. She's going to save everything. She's like, oh my God, sir, I feel so bad. I tell you what, I give you and your friends a full refund. And uh, I know another place down the street. They let fat people jump. <laughs> My friends are like, let's go Operation Dumbo Drop. <laughs> now we go to the next place. It's worse. It's horrible. We're in the middle of a field, and there's just this airplane. I use the word airplane very loosely. <laughs> it was like a tractor with wings. <laughs> and I walk over, and the guy just says, give us 300 bucks, get on the plane. <laughs> I don't feel safe about it. I did it. I put the money down, I walk toward the plane, and as I'm walking toward the plane, everybody on the plane is staring at me, and I think this is about to happen again. But this time, as I get on the plane, I realize why they're staring at me. My friends are on the plane telling everybody why we're at this place, instead <laughs> <laughs> so the other one. So somebody asked me to sit in the middle, because they don't want the plane to go, <laughs> and I'm, telling, I'm pissed at this point. I'm embarrassed, I don't know what I'm doing. And uh, I get on the plane, and I sit down next to my buddy. Now, my buddy, is he's a Long Island Guido. I mean, he's a serious, real deal. He has the blow-dried hairdo. He's wearing a real skin-tight, medium shirt. Yeah, you can see his nipples through the shirt. And he's sitting there, and he's chomping on gum. He's just going... <laughs> I sit down next to him and I'm pissed. I go, I can't even believe we're doing this shit. And as I lean back, it dawns on me. Probably as it dawns on you guys during the telling of this. I don't have a parachute. <laughs> and I look at him, he doesn't have one either. Yeah. So I ask him, where the fuck's the parachute? He goes, don't worry about it, bro. We jump in tandem. <laughs> we jump in what? <laughs> 
I don't know what that means. <laughs> when you jump tandem, it means there's another dude. He stayed to your back. He got the parachute. <laughs> that sounds horrible. <laughs> I look out the window. I see a guy, head to toe, rainbow spandex. He's prancing toward the plane. I know this is my guy. <laughs> <laughs> he gets on the plane, he takes one look at me, beer belly, wearing a bowling shirt, just sitting there, he sees my buddy and his nipples, and he immediately goes for him. He goes, Hi, I'm Duncan, I'll be your jump instructor. And I was like, get him, Duncan. <laughs> Duncan gets down behind my friend, he goes to tie these straps on, I'm like, forget about the straps, Dunk, you hold them real close. <laughs> We're going to be fine. <laughs> Pretty cool though, right? You get up in the air, you forget about how dangerous it is because your adrenaline starts going. They open the back of the plane, the wind's just. <laughs> my guy yells, All right, everyone up! When I stood up, I heard my guy go, Ooh. <laughs> You're a big boy, aren't you? <laughs> I get it, I'm fat. <laughs> I've covered this today. There's no, Mark, you're not fat. You're short. Your weight, it pulls on my back. It hurts when we walk. Or first the jumps. What I needed to do is get down on all fours. <laughs> you got to be shitting me. There's no, you first. Go. So in front of everybody on the plane, I have to get down on all fours and crawl with a man strapped to my back. <laughs> and he's dry humping me the whole time, like, just a couple more feet, so. Just a couple more feet. <laughs> you, know, you get to the edge of that plane, and you're looking death in the face. I'm three pieces of cloth from being gay. <laughs> and they're videotaping it. <laughs> you guys get the video? No? no? Smart move. You wish you did? Oh, no, you don't. I didn't want the video, but my friends thought my parents would love to see this. So they bought it, took it to my house, we watched with my mom and dad. This is how you get shot out of the plane. We're in doggy style position. <laughs> my guy turned, high five Duncan, and then went. <laughs> and I screamed like a little girl. I just, it's scary. It's beautiful. You see how big the world is, how little we are. Life comes into perspective, and I've never felt this good about my life until I heard the instructor go, Do you remember your instructions? <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll all come back. One, two, three. I'm like, We got a hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was pissed. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing, so he had to pull the cord for me. Now, when the cord goes up, I didn't know because I didn't get the safety instruction. Your weight and his weight come down the two straps located right here. They don't stay there. They go up with the shoe. Now, I didn't properly move or talk that way. So my video was like... <laughs> Drool comes flying out. It's so painful. Oh, then when you go to hit the ground, when you're coming down to hit the ground, they yell, I'm going to yell one or two things when I hit the ground. I'm going to yell slide, which is put your feet up and you will slide into a landing or you yell run, which means fucking run. He's ready, go ready. He goes, run. I go, ah, ah, ah. But I was out of shape. By the time we got to the ground, it was just like, <laughs> this guy lands on top of me. Now, I weighed 250 at the time. This guy was a good 275. When two bodies of that size collide, there's a sound. <laughs> My buddy, after this happened, I was so embarrassed. The buddy I jumped with, all he does now is try to get me to go to the gym with him. That's, he fucking loves the gym. He comes over to my apartment, he's like, yo, bro, been working on my chest for two weeks, bro, I'm fucking sore. Stop going. I've been on the couch for two weeks. Yeah, I'm fine. Another thing that happened embarrassing to me about doing the uh, out of shape thing, uh, I got winded wee bowling. Do you know how embarrassing that is? It's my turn to go, I'm like... <laughs> He's an evil machine. It is. Because when
when you play the Wii, you have to make an avatar of yourself. And my my sister in law, she's like, you can make you can make you. So when we play, you can be you. And I'm like, that's why we're playing a fucking video game. I don't like me. And she's like, no, we can make it look just like. It. And then I did the Wii Fit, and you're doing these little things where you're like exercising. All of a sudden, my avatar went. Oh, my <laughs> really? Even in fantasy, I have to be a fat fuck. <laughs> Oh, so I am married. I got oh, no. married uh, last summer, and uh, my wife is. Oh, uh, don't clap! You don't know her. <laughs> <laughs> I love her, but she's a Philly girl. Uh, yeah, you can back me up. Then Philly people are tough. Yeah, she was the work dude a lot. Oh, I do me. too. Yeah, it's a guy in bed. You don't want to hear. Ooh, that feels good, dude. <laughs> <laughs> My name, though. I wish That's Corey kind was of here. She took my name. <laughs> Her new name is Angelina Marie Riccadonna. That's loosely translated to Meatball Deco Parmesan. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Italian name, man. Her mom's Sicilian. Uh, so I did the right thing, knowing she was Sicilian. I asked her mom before I got engaged, and it was the right thing to do. Because her mom's like, oh my god, Mark, whatever you do, don't buy a ring. And she wants her great-grandmother's ring. It's a family heirloom from Sicily. Do not buy a ring. It's like, fuck yeah. <laughs> I didn't have to buy a ring. You know, the hard part was getting four guys to help dig up grandma. <laughs> 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 Some of you guys took that joke very seriously. <laughs> we haven't talked about children. We have. I, uh, I want a kid. I really do. I want a son. I'm naming him after my father's father. Call him Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Nana? Then, if we have a girl, Nana. Nana. I fucking love that name. <laughs> I do want to name that. Fucking joking aside, I do want to name my first kid after my grandfather. My grandfather was amazing. He said I could do anything I want with my life. I had a teacher in high school who said I couldn't. She failed me in English class senior year because we wrote a paper called the Shadow Report. Shadow Report is where you follow the person who has the job you want for the rest of your life, and you write a paper. Failed me because I followed my grandfather, and according to her, retirement... <laughs> Good job. <laughs> but I looked at it like this. My grandfather woke up whenever he wanted. He watched TV. He drank beer. And on Friday, got a check in the mail. <laughs> I want to do that shit. <laughs> but you can't, Mark. No such job. Ran into her a year ago. She goes, What are you doing with your life? I go, I'm a comedian. Travel all over the world. Wake up whenever I want. I watch TV. I drink beer. And I get paid. <laughs> Yes, I won, bitch. <laughs> Dreams. Woo! Dreams. Dreams. I do get to travel all over the world. Um, I recently got to go over to Iraq, which was pretty cool. Uh, I'll tell you guys the most embarrassing thing that ever happened to me, and the proudest thing that ever happened to me. Um, I was in Iraq, and uh, when you're over there, you're not allowed to take any ground transportation. You have to fly everywhere. So we got Black Hawk helicopters. And we had a group called the 101st Cav, they called themselves the werewolves, they were our escorts, they were our security, they were with us the whole time. These guys were awesome, we became very good friends, but halfway through the tour, we stopped at a base and they were telling us on the way in, everybody on this base is a marine, it's all marines, it's called Al-Assad. So when we come in, I thought it would be funny, <laughs> I went on stage, made fun of these army guys, and the Blackhawks. It was a bad idea. <laughs> they were my ride home. <laughs> yeah, but I did the jokes anyway, and they had fun. Everybody was laughing. Then after, we went to go eat. And as we were sitting there, the army guys were smart. They said, hey, Mark, you know what? It's a tradition at Al-Assad when it's your first time here. You can prove you're a man if you can eat a whole bowl of Al-Assad chili. Now, what they didn't tell me is Al-Assad chili isn't for the Americans. This is what they make the Iraqis that work on base. Our bodies aren't used to the curried goat meat and the ground up glass and shit they're probably putting in it. <laughs> but I ate the whole bowl. And as soon as I did, they go, all right, time to get to the next show. Get on the chopper. I got on the chopper. They let me sit in the hurricane seat, too. It gets better. Hurricane seat's in the dead center, so the pilots are here. 250 caliber machine gunners here. 
three Marines get in behind us. Now, helicopters are smooth. They just take off. And I felt the bubble. <laughs> I thought it would be okay. I figured like, I had about 30, 25 minutes, you know, and then it, but the flight's only going to be like 15. And I'm sitting in this helicopter like a pregnant woman. I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> the helicopter starts going, I'm not feeling that good, you know, but they start flying, and the one guy starts making jokes with the pilot, and all of a sudden the helicopter goes, <laughs> and I felt the bubble rise. I didn't shit myself, per se. <laughs> so I didn't tweet as much as I blogged. <laughs> I underwear looked like I used coffee filter. <laughs> but in that moment, two emotions immediately went over me. Because when we went down, I was like, <laughs> there was panic. I just shit myself. <laughs> and there was relief. Because I realized I'm in a helicopter, which is basically a giant fan. <laughs> the doors are wide open. I'm going to get away with this shit. <laughs> now I'm sitting there in my Irish diaper. <laughs> I look behind me and I see three Marines go like this. <laughs> I was proud of myself. I made three guys who handle mustard gas for a living gag. <laughs> so I radioed up to the guys. I go, guys, you got to check this shit out. They turn and look. They start laughing. But then, one by one, even with their masks on, they went, oh, Jesus, God! What I didn't realize is I was in the hurricane seat. Which meant I was the eye of the storm. <laughs> the air never left the cabin. <laughs> we were literally in a shit storm. <laughs> <laughs> when we landed, Carlos walked me to the perimeter. He took the patch off his jacket. He handed it to me, making me an honorary member of the werewolves. He also handed me a pair of pants. He did it on purpose. Now, that's the proudest moment of my life becoming a member of the werewolves. But how do I explain that to my grandkids? <laughs> That's the day they all got purple hearts and black lung. <laughs> all right, I'll get out of here on this. Uh, where's the indie people? Indy? Indiana? Over there? You guys, I'm going to be at Morty's at the end of the month. You guys should come out and check it out. Right, 96 so, in Keystone. Yeah, I'll be there. You guys yeah. come out. Email me, I'll give you the tickets. But, uh, yeah, all right, and I'll... Uh, if you guys want to come out to Indiana, you're all more than happy. I'll hook you all up with tickets. So, now, what's there to do in Indy? Is there good food? No. Yes? No? Yes. Somebody said no. I like yeah. the South. The South has the best food. Yeah. It's so good when I go to the bathroom, I can hear my ass go.